Let's talk about pH in San Pedro cactus. So we're looking at some Trichocereus here, and I was gonna talk a bit about fertilizers and pH. Uh, we've got Bruce's dragon right in front of us. And I was just kind of checking out the tip and going, oh, it looks a little bit yellow. Uh, these have been getting my plain well water for a while now, about a month or so, and I do fertilize these regularly and um, they haven't been fertilized quite that recently. They've been getting watered about twice a week and my well water is 8.0. And so a higher pH allows more phosphorus to be available and a lower pH allows more nitrogen to be available. And to me, I can see this yellow tip here. This is a CSD. And you can get yellow tips like this from heat stress or a little too much sun. And there is no shade above these particular cacti right here. Uh, behind it, we've got Koopa. But what I'm seeing is Koopa is a really blue cacti. And that yellow tip center looks completely unhealthy to me. And I do realize that it is, I'm pushing, you know, it is July now and we're in the middle of summer and the heat is really getting hot. But like I said, they've been getting about 8.0 is the pH that they've been receiving of my plain well water. So what I'm assuming is that if I lower my pH and if I begin to give these a higher nitrogen, that this yellowed bit will slowly fill in with a, a bit more green and for the Koopa it'll be a bit more blue and I'll get a healthier growth that I'm a bit happier with. Behind it on the right here we've got Modelo. So this Modelo, oh, I, don't, I can't barely reach it but it definitely looks like it has a yellow tip up there too. It's actually kind of a good tool for me to be able to see the tip with the camera since I can't see up there. Uh, but the Modelo is really fast growing. Very, very healthy cacti. And to see that tip and that coloration, I don't believe that it is only from heat stress. Like on this Koopa here, I, I don't believe that is only heat stress. I believe that it has a bit to do with the pH. So I'm gonna go ahead and water these. I'll water them about three times in a row. I'm watering twice a week. I'll water these three times in a row with the pH of about a 5.8. And the PPM, I'll do it about 800. And my well water is about 162 on its PPM, the parts per million, just on its own plain water. So we're pushing about you know, 8.0 pH, and I'll give them a simple nitrogen that they can easily use, something they can soak right up. And I'll probably give them some aloe and some other things that will drop that pH, uh, along with possibly a little bit of phosphoric acid. And then hopefully we'll see some color change. This is clone C in front of us here. And all, just about all these cacti that we're looking at are grafted. The Koopa is not grafted, neither is the Modelo. And amazingly, the Modelo was planted at about this height there, probably at about, uh, what is that, two and a half feet. And it has grown to become larger than the Koopa, and it was planted at a smaller size. Amazing how fast growing that is. Here we have the Paula. And Paula does not normally have that yellow of a tip. So it is very interesting to see that coloration. And I think that, you know, changing the pH is going to correct the growth and the coloration that I'm getting right now. And it'll allow things to grow a little bit faster. Things are kind of halting and they don't need to halt because of this heat. They can really grow through that. It's just a standard PC. And so in this grafted area, I normally plant about three PC cuttings onto one five gallon pot. 
And once they get to um, about two feet tall, then I chop the top and graft onto them. Sometimes I'll plant unrooted grafts into this. So they'll be grafted onto a PC about a foot or so tall and I'll plant those. And we've got this Cactohebra though. I put one in each five gallon pot. So you can see for size comparison, the Cactohebra dough is very thick. That's probably about six inches thick or possibly more. And the Koopa is in a 15 gallon pot. I buried those ones just a tad so they would uh, topple over. And so these Brewster's Dragons are grafted onto Cactohebra though. That was one cutting in a five gallon pot. And then here's kind of a good example of put the three cuttings in one five gallon pot. And I wait until they get about that tall before I graft onto them. So I pot them in there unrooted and then they root, they grow. And once they get tall enough, then I graft onto them. Sometimes I'll put like a short one along with two bigger ones. This is a CSD graft, it's just pupping. And we can see the PC next to it is just about big enough to go ahead and graft onto. Here's a sun goddess with a CSD sitting on top of it. And there's a fresh cut TIG times Yowie. And so these TIGs times Yowie now have a couple branches next to them that are tall enough for me to graft onto. So I'll probably chop the top of those and graft on. And then here's some, these ones I, I planted, they were unrooted and I grafted onto them as cuttings. And once the graft healed, I potted them up and it was kind of perfect because I took the cutting and the graft healed while the base of the cut end of the PC healed. It's good timing. That's kind of a great timing method. Here's a really cool one. This is SSO2 times PC. Really digging the coloration on that super mottled and just kind of weird. So what's cool about those is here we've got a regular PC. And these seem to be a lot stronger in their growth and they're growing much faster. Uh, they're not as prone to getting any spots or anything on them. So hopefully they're really spicy. If they were almost as spicy as an SSO2, but they grew way faster and they were easier and hardier, then that would be like a win-win. I would be really stoked, you know, to be able to grow SSO2 times PC rather than just plain SSO2 because it could be something that's just easier to grow and grows faster, even if it's not quite as spicy. Here we're looking at Jim's Twin Spine and they are really putting out twin spines, which is cool. I just cut one of these from my buddy uh, on Reddit, PCP for breakfast. PCP for breakfast is gonna get a cut of this Jim twin spine. He's gonna send me a KR04, which sounds pretty cool. I don't have that one. Here's some cool scopes, Scopy. Awesome four winds on that. Love that. My buddy from Ryan, uh, Reddit, Mr. Yan, he sent me these. So I'm pretty stoked. He actually sent me one little seedling and I chopped it up. Can't really see, but that's a, it's just a little slab graft underneath that. That was the tip. It's puffed out quite nice. I love how puffy that it looks and here's a scenic graft and some fred crested fred those are some weirdos huh and some of those exact same ones so i was able to take this one cactus 
and slice it into about 10 pieces. And now I've got some really nice spineless guys. Stoked on those. Plenty of them. This is a nice one here. Real four windy, smooth, blocky. And here's a neon from my buddy Squirrel Dog. Kind of had to grow through a little bit of sunburn. It wasn't liking it, but you know, sometimes when cacti is getting sunburn, you just let them grow through it, let them get the burn if they're fresh and if they're taking on to it. Here's a Kawea. This is a really old, old, terminated, funky piece. And it sat in that pot for a while before it just exploded with growth. There's a beautiful one. This skin on this is so rubbery. So cool. This is a blue jewels giant. I got that from Cactus Ron. He's got a huge stand of it. And it, his is so blue. So the spot that we're in here is totally full sun um so we get a little bit of shade over where we were from the macadamia nut trees that i have here but right above us is just gets blasted with full sun and it keeps a nice powdery look to it love that All right, cool. Well, uh, hopefully that putting the lower pH of a 5.8 with the high nitrogen onto these tips. And um, I will be watering the pot mostly, but I'm going to go ahead and spray down the pot a little bit or the cactus itself and get a little foliar feed. And hopefully that will green up those tips. And we'll be checking in with these grafts and see if this this paula is grafted see if it gets a color change and this csd if it gets a color change and this koopa and i mean we'll definitely be able to notice what occurs when they receive that lower ph and that higher nitrogen content and then we can all learn together and you guys can adjust your own feeding schedules accordingly. Cheers. I'm going to put up a link for uh, how to make your own aloe vera fertilizer. It doesn't have to be made from aloe vera. You can make it from any kind of aloe. But that's what I'm going to use on these to lower the pH.